Are we doing this? <laughs> we are doing this. <laughs> okay, okay, everyone, this is okay. Jason Tucker. This is WP Water Cooler, episode number 89. Today we're going to be talking about how to understand and use WordPress from a designer point of view. So let's go around the room here real quick and get everyone introduced. We're going to go on the far left-hand side. It might not be left-hand side for you. With Chris. Hey, I'm Chris Ford. I'm the creative director at Creativity Included, and I blog at creativityincluded.com. Chris is about to go to a formal event. I know. <laughs> I'm in short because it's San Diego. <laughs> How about you, Michelle? Oh, hey, I'm Michelle, uh, independent graphic designer, and uh, mm -hmm. I also sell posters and artwork at mynameismichelle.com. <coughs> Work Camp Chicago. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I do that, too. <laughs> <laughs> like, three weeks away, I'm totally not freaking out really bad right now. Or even remembering that it exists. I've, I've had this no weird bigs. cough all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> you should get that looked at. How about you, Natalie? Hi, I'm Natalie MacLees, founder and principal of Purple Pen Productions and uh, main organizer of WordCamp Los Angeles in three months. Oh, LA in the house. You know when yours is. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Rachel? Hi, I'm Rachel Butts, rachelbutts.com. I do custom WordPress design. Cool. How about Yay! you, Robert? Yay. <laughs> My name is Robert Ninehouse, and I am owner of Nine Studios uh, Design and Creative, and I'm a co-organizer of Orange uh, WordCamp Orange County. Yay! Which is coming up in June. June seventh and eighth. Two yep. weeks. Should be <laughs> What about you, Sarah? Hi, I'm Sarah Weefald. I work with bands making their websites and social medias and community management and things of that nature, and I also work with some brands. You do a designer meetup too, don't you? I do. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I also facilitate the OC WordPress design meetup. Which is I'm going to help promote, <laughs> everybody promote themselves today. Thank you. <laughs> what is happening? All right, what are you going to do about Say? All right, go for it, Say. Hi, my name's Say, and I'm in a band. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Say. Say. I was trying to like pretend to forget or remember to forget or something, but. Um, WordPress, hashtag, um, at Sanford Media. Wow. That was, that was quite great. an intro. I don't know. I was trying to, I don't know. How do you top that? I don't know. And I'm, she wears her sunglasses at night. I'm, In the daytime, <laughs> specifically. At this point. I'm Steve Zengit. I um, am the founder of Zeke Interactive, and I lead the OC WordPress Meetup. And I will be speaking at uh, Orange County WordCamp and WordCamp Chicago. There you go. Nice. Suzette, tell us about yourself, girl. Hello, I'm Suzette Frank. I'm the WordPress evangelist over at Media Temple, which is a web hosting company. Suzettefrank.com, and you can follow me on the Twitters at mt underscore Suzette. And she also hits up all of the local art studios. She's also just generally awesome and leaves a sparkle <laughs> trail in her room. <laughs> like a snail, except for sparkle trail. <laughs> Uh, wow. <laughs> I'm Jason Tucker. I can be found at um, Jason Tucker on Twitter and WPMedia.pro. Um, just so you guys know, uh, for if you're watching this five years from now, um, we're actually recording this live during a holiday. This is a Memorial Day here in the United States. So just want to, uh, you know, put it out there. That's what we're doing. In case and you're I'm wondering why we're all so casual, because normally, yes. yeah, super normal, normally, normally, normally we're all <laughs> normally like piss forward. <laughs> Chris. Yes, we're all you like know, super on it, always. I, I wear a gown everywhere I go. <laughs> <laughs> so does Steve. Me too. Oh, I'm going to wear one. I'm totally going to like gown out, find my own prom dress for work camp. Or you camp. said gown out because, wow. Gown out. I want to gown I'm gonna out. I'm going to start using that one. I'm going to gown out. Wait, wait, oh, wait, I have a, how Brand do you new. gown out your WordPress site? Oh, With that design. Way. Right? <laughs> there you go. Great segue. That was awesome. Go me. And then it fell on its face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought Sam was going to tell us how she gets our WordPress website. 
Yes, no, like, exactly. How do you dress up your WordPress website? Do you just slap on some lipstick and a, and a formal gown? Well, or do you have to, like, take a shower and stuff first? I think <laughs> well, one metaphorically, one. metaphorical showers. I think I one kind of believe that if all you're doing is making something pretty, you're more of a decorator than a designer. Um, because that. design is a thought process, not a style. Hmm. Is like a decorator that. somebody who works on cakes? Um, yeah. I mean, well, you're, you're they're not designing designing to paint. You're not thinking about solving a problem. You're just throwing something that may or may not be appropriate for a client. Ah. I see what we just on did. Here. A I've heard Michelle she'll talk a lot about um, the difference between decorating and actually solving problems with design. And design should definitely solve problems. Yeah, like the metaphor that I like to use is like the difference between an interior decorator and an interior designer. Like interior decorators can do a lot with the space that they have, but they're really limited to just putting stuff on that space. An interior designer is actually creating the whole space. Like they have to have a much deeper understanding. So that's a really that's good a way of looking at analogy. it. Cool. It's super great, especially because I always start with the building that, like, when you're developing a site, you need to build the blueprint first, and I, like, harp on the fact that everybody wants to do design first, and no one wants to think about all the complicated stuff, like where things go and what content's on there. So I use the analogy of a blueprint for a house, and I say, you know, you're not going to paint the walls before you build the walls. So this is even better. Now I have another stage. First you have to build the house, then you get the interior designer in to structure it and get it working, and then you decorate it. That was a great analogy, apparently. <laughs> 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 uh, you send us all in the silence, say. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Hi. Good morning, say. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's afternoon here. Whatever. So, how, so you how have we, little to no excuse. So how do we apply excuse. that? How do we apply that to 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 WordPress themes? That type of analogy, or or maybe even the one that uh, that Chris came up with. Well, I was actually interested to hear what you guys had to say about the DIY kind of uh, design your own WordPress themes. That's kind of like a thing right now, right? Um, the, the the Chris Lemma just wrote a review on Make. Um, the, wait, not not Chris Lemma. The Chris Lemma. Yeah, like the Facebook <laughs> the Chris Lemma. The Chris Lemma just wrote an article on Make, which is you know the uh, so it's like this drag and drop uh, theme, and I imagine that all of you uh, designers were like. <laughs> convulsing. Yeah. I mean, I actually think. It, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Go for it. it. It'd actually be kind of cool because it gives people the the ability to do some stuff that could potentially look very nice and clean on their own. But if it's the sort of thing where, when I've worked with with people trying to build websites, I mean, I'm sure this has all happened to you. There's some sort of anxiety about not having enough on the page. Mm -hmm. Um. So, like, instead of thinking about, like, what the user is actually looking for and putting that right in front of their face, the concern is more about, like, does it look like we don't have anything going on? I need it to look like we have things going on. Um, so I, I think one of the most important elements of design that people should think about, if they're using something that's DIY or putting together a website design in general, is just making sure that there's nothing extraneous there. I think Just those like DIY tools. Text. I think those DIY tools in the hands of a non-designer can be very dangerous. Well, sure, but I, I mean, agree, that's, but that's in the hands of a designer, yeah. I actually in one month taught seventeen graphic design students who graduated on Saturday how to use the Divi theme by Elegant Themes to build a website. Awesome. And so they had great design skills. Um, I did it because the websites last year were horrible. These were kids with amazing print portfolios, but their mm. websites were on Wix. Mm. Um, mm. But I mean, these are kids graduating in today's economy. I went to the portfolio review, and out of 62 entrants, only two were entered in what they were calling the interactive category, like it was, you know, 1996. <laughs> and there were 62 <laughs> kids there. And, you know, they were competing in packaging and branding, and there were two kids who had an interactive portfolio. And to me, it's like, that's where the jobs are. And so yeah. I went in and introduced these kids to this theme that let them design, it let them focus on their brand, it let them focus on their content, it let them focus on, you know, showing their work off. But in one month, they were able to do something with absolutely no web experience 
Um, and honestly, the stuff they came up with was as good, if not better, than a lot of like stuff that I see out there that you know people are charging clients for because they had that design sensibility already. Well, see, and I this think was that's a great tool to apply it. That's the point, right? That Steve was making is that in the hands of a, a designer, those tools can bridge the gap between the design sensibility and the lack of codeability. But well, in the hands of a non-designer, you just get like you know some random out there who's like you know a small business owner or whatever who's like I'm going to build a website, and then they get in there and does it front page all over itself? That's yeah. true with every theme, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean. Developer for Genesis, I saw people perpetuate some absolutely horrible things to what started off as a really nice theme mm -hmm. because they they wanted to make it their own without thinking about things like a grid and content strategy and and the user experience of their site. Well, sure. I mean, it's it's like the new uh, buy a copy of Photoshop and now I can do whatever I want thing and like. But it, it is interesting the point right. brought up about about these DIY things that I know a lot of um, developers maybe kind of shudder and think like why would you do this like that code is not clean blah 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 but like it does make sense for people like in the design field that are kind of straddling this weird space between like we're not <laughs> users like we know we we have a more in depth knowledge and we have a very specific skill set that the average person doesn't have but we're not all we're we're all kind of varying levels of developers. Some of us more than others, you know. So uh, I think it, it does kind of help to to allow people like us to maybe do what we do for a living. Yeah, though the DIY or the the customize or modified themes, that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is, you know, with the custom child themes, which is what I specialize in. Um, you know, starting out with that wireframe, making the design in Photoshop, and then handing it over to the developer. I we know enough about development to know what to make, what kind of notes to give them. You know, that way we really get the design that we want. I do have to say, though, I was speaking to a lot of graphic designers um, at the portfolio review, and that was the biggest question I got: is I'm not involved in the WordPress community, so I don't know any developers. How do I find someone who's not going to pull the typical freelance developer thing, where they take your money, um, and then two days before the deadline, just kind of disappear and you never hear from them again? Well, They're really like, happened. how do I find those? Yeah, I mean that's kind of a separate conversation. But I mean, finding someone that is trusted, you sometimes do have to go through some bad people. But I specifically had two guys that were full time for me. Um, and they just got paid bi-monthly. They turned their hours into me. They got paid after the fact. And then they trusted me enough to know that I would pay them. So it was just a working relationship, kind of a different situation then. But, but to be fair, you are in the WordPress community, so you're exposed to who the developers are and who's good and who's right. not. But and I if wasn't you're always. That, but I, I wasn't suggest, always. So. For, for people like that, Chris, I suggest they go to a meetup and work out a trade. You know, barter they should be for some code. WP hired is a great place. Yeah. Um, like, don't be afraid of being involved as a designer. Like, yeah. I feel like it's more friendly now to people that don't fit in the developer or blogger niches. Like, yeah, places like Codable. Designers, uh, designers are very welcome within this community and, and very yeah, much I mean, needed. I completely Miami agree, but they're an completely entire ignorant that the community even exists. Like, they have no idea that that's even out there as a resource <laughs> for them until one of us goes into their world and says, hey man, this is available to you. It's I think like that's the problem with mystery. most of the... It's, but that's the problem with a lot of the DIY folks out there, not just the designers. You know, people are trying to build these websites and, you know, kind of live their lives unaware that there's a WordPress community. I mean, I built in WordPress for years before I realized there was a WordPress community. And I was, you know, a developer in it and doing all the research and reading people's blogs. So even though you might, you know, be that close, you still don't know that it exists. But I don't think that should... Um, preclude you from building a, or you know a decent website or getting that information from the internet. I mean, it does exist. The Google exists. You know, they're not like yeah. living on a desert island. It's kind of there. You would be surprised. No, and I'm I'm gonna agree with you, Chris. I don't think it's taught a lot. I have guest taught and uh, and, and or guest lectured at the Art Institute before, so I've been to a lot of their portfolio reviews, and I can mirror what Chris is saying. There's always very few people that have specialized in interactive. Uh, when you go to those portfolio mm -hmm. reviews. I don't think it's going to be I'm going to have to disagree there. <laughs> What's that? 
I went to the Art Institute, so I'm going to have to disagree there. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not um, ragging on the Art Institute at all. I think. It's, I think it's great. I think. I, I will. Think the program is. I think the program is fantastic. <laughs> I think. I'm I'm saying, saying, I'm I'm I taught myself in more in later than uh, there. I'm just but. In, Orange, in Orange County specifically, the portfolio reviews I've been to has always been a, you know three or four people that have been off in the corner that have specialized in interactive. That's what I've seen. I think most of that is about they haven't learned it in school. Yeah, yeah, because the instructors at those institutes, everything moves slowly. Those are still design yep. instructors, and they're still thinking in terms of the 1990 interactive thing. So yeah. because they're not the ones that are out there researching, right. especially in those yeah. art institute yeah. or kind of pay schools. You know, that's I not agree, like Chris. Most of the, all the WordPress stuff that I learned, I taught myself after the right. fact. No, no. fact. I had to teach myself and and look at stuff and reach out and go to meetups. I mean. You yeah, just have to I mean, I did that too, and I'm not a designer. I I did all that exact same stuff. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't think accessibility should be the problem. I think you know, I mean, it depends on what we're talking about. Are we talking about people getting into WordPress and using designs and or using like a DIY builder and getting crazy? Or I mean, you well, know. okay. So there's like so on the topic of like the education gap because I think that's a really interesting one. Mm -hmm. um, there is a huge gap in how uh, in how web is taught in schools, and like actually, the one of the talks I give, um, I gave it the title "Website is Not a Poster," and the reason being, like literally in college, which wasn't that long ago, the first thing that the professor said to us in our web design class was like, our, "A website is exactly like a poster," and that bothered me so much because I'm like. It is not at all like a poster. Like, why are you teaching us this? Like, a website's interactive. Like, that is that is so different. Like, you cannot. But that's how that's how it's being taught. So it's not surprising that there's this education gap of designers that are like having like struggling with interactive interactive. So, media. Robert, Robert, how did you make the crossover into the WordPress community? Uh, I actually got lucky um, a little bit. I, it was a friend of a friend who referred me to WordPress developers. I was wanting to do like a shopping cart, had no idea where to begin. I taught myself Flash, which was a nightmare. Ooh, and, you started out uh, with a shopping cart? Please yeah, my, started I, out with my Flash. first website um, on WordPress was a shopping cart. And it, wow. um, yeah, I mean, it was great. I mean, you know, we, we got it up and running and stuff, but. Um, was it you know, a custom it build or were you using a plugin? No, it was custom built. I had uh, the guys at Pixel Drive, Brandon and Jeff, do it. Um, that was like my first introduction to them. Um, so they were like, "Oh, you guys, you can just do everything within WordPress." And I was like, "Sweet, this is great." It's like and an had, origin like, story. Yeah, I mean, I had gone through maybe like four developers before, kind of like meeting them and stuff, and then them being able to say you can do everything within WordPress. I was like, "Oh, I don't know what WordPress is. This is great." And then slowly started kind of getting into a little bit more, trying to figure out exactly like you know, what limitations there were, if any, and kind of like how to style things like after that. So um, that's kind of like how I got into it. And now WordPress is obviously huge. Um, you know, I mean, it was even a little bit back then. Um, but um, but we, we do pretty much everything within WordPress. And it's just, it's easy now knowing, you know, how to design for it now. Cool. Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the same question. I see you guys to talk about that. <laughs> what do you think, Natalie? Hmm. Uh, I came from print design background. I used to do catalogs and uh, uh, packaging and got into websites and got to WordPress really quickly because I think it was the second website that I built for a client. They wanted a blog and I built it on uh, like a child theme of Kubrick, <laughs> and it's still up. It's still live. Oh my so God, Kubrick! She still uses it. Yeah, and I never. I love those old sites that are up, and you're just like, that's just that's still there. Okay, I'm not gonna look at it because it's so old. <laughs> I'm not gonna pretend that's not there anymore. I have a few flashlights like that too. <laughs> when you got when when you made the transition from print to to web design, so I mean, I feel like we've talked about that a little bit, and I've experienced that a lot when I talk to people about putting together websites for them. Like, what what's the biggest difference that you see between print and web design? That you can't have everything be pixel perfect. That you don't have complete control over every little thing on the page the way what? that you do with Pikes. <laughs> <Pikes. laughs> 
Pikas? Yeah, what are we no, not? That's said, so cool. No, no, he said Pikas and gave a fist bump at the same time. Pikas? <laughs> yeah, Arlo, that's our new rallying cry. Pikas. I have a <laughs> background too. Come on. That's awesome. <laughs> I had a pike rope when I was in school. I I, I was a uh, I learned um I was in college before the internet apparently existed. Um and we learned how to do like layout on the thing and it was just that that brought back a lot of memories, man. Did you have, have a proper cropper, cropper and a wax machine? Yeah, we had the wax machine where you had to like lay the stuff down and like you had your columns and then you'd like cut out like for your little widows and all that stuff. Oh my god, I haven't thought about that in a long time. Good times. Good times. But yeah. I miss, miss the smell of the wax, so. I learned oh, how to use T squares and triangles uh, and the <laughs> set rub ons. <laughs> Wait, what about rub ons? <laughs> the letter set rub ons. Like, if you uh, wanted to do type, you went and bought a sheet of Helvetica and then rubbed on every letter of a headline. <laughs> you rubbed on every letter of the headline. <laughs> Actually, I, uh, uh, speaking of fonts, though. Yeah. A question <laughs> that I've seen a lot in the in the word in the word OC WordPress Facebook group is about fonts and specifically using very fancy scripty fonts. What do you guys think about that? And I realize that's kind of a leading question. Is it appropriate for the client? Yeah. I think yeah. if it's applicable, then then it works. Some clients yeah. won't not let you use it. Is Comic like, Sans ever applicable? No. <laughs> if you are an five-year-old having a font as the body text, that's your font. But Did you see they redid no. Comic Sans, the new, the new version of Comic Sans? Oh yeah, that was that was actually nice. I liked Comic Sans. It's so bad. It's <laughs> new better than Sans. the old Comic Sans. I like new Comic Sans. I saw on Twitter the other one day that I want to make a T-shirt of. Someone tweeted to me, "I hate Lobster almost as much as I hate Google's crappy font rendering." Lobster. <laughs> That's my T-shirt. That's name of that font. Lobster. lobster. I want to make the type ball like crufty and with like some <laughs> pixels on <laughs> it and everything closed up so that. What it makes, what makes talk about that? Yeah, what's, what's the matter with Google fonts? The way that it renders in the browser, like even their own Chrome browser, like it just doesn't it doesn't render right. It's like you have to put like fancy, I think like anti aliased features on it in order to get to look somewhat appropriate. But even then it still doesn't look good. Yeah. Uh, so many of their fonts don't have full that. families. Yeah. So no, so what should I be so what should I be spacing using between the letters of Google fonts and like they render very bizarrely. Alright, yeah. so what kind of font should I be using instead? Typekit like type type yeah. is good. Fonts.com. Does anyone like use it? Have some cash. Poffler um, Frere. At Fontface. Typekit generator thingy. <laughs> You're at uh, Fontface. You mean right now? Font 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 <laughs> font <squirrel. laughs> yeah. Your face is at Fontface. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? But a lot of the fonts at Font Squirrel are just Google's fonts. Yeah. 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 Wow. Well, yeah, but they're just prettier. Though. They render better, so it doesn't fucking. There's also an ethical question with Google's fonts because they went out and severely underpaid type designers to make those fonts in exchange for exposure. Hmm. So, Nobody uh, does that. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody lies. exposure for lots and lots of free work that's worth tons of money. <laughs> Google, Google's, Google's really a cost cutter. You know what I mean? Like they're really I looking know. to save money because yeah. they have to give all their employees whiskey every Wednesday. So really, yeah. you know, priorities. Oh, they, they couldn't afford the font designers. They just didn't have the money. Like if we're going to talk about fonts and money, we have to talk about. Um, and this isn't necessarily WordPress related, but we have to talk about papyrus and avatar, right? Like, can I just mention it? Can I just say it, and then we can move on? Oh my God! <laughs> I right? know. Let's all collectively, as like people who notice fonts, just take a moment of silence. Okay, okay I'm going to segue into a different <laughs> subject. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> we're, talk we're talking about design and things like that. Um, I think a big thing in our community is a lot of people don't know the difference between a designer and a, and a developer. They should be both or one or the other. 
Yeah, um, and a production artist too. I mean, I yeah, see a lot of people out there who are really good and... production artists. I, I you actually, know, they're not a hardcore developer or hardcore designer. They're in the middle. In a former in a former life, I was a production designer. That's what I did before I started Z. And they're totally valuable. I mean, oh, yeah, people unicorn. get all kind of butt hurt when you're like, that's the difference. Mike right. Montiero has a thing where if you only do what the client tells you, you're a production artist and you, you're not a designer. I mean, you don't have the right to call you a designer if, if you're just a pair of hands and people get kind of upset with that. And it's like, dude, we need production artists. Yeah. It's yeah. a really yeah. valuable position to have. Without him. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we need Chris Lima on the show to just say, no, no, no! I don't do that. No, I don't do that. No. I just do design. Well, but I, think, I think, but I think Rachel, that's the responsibility of, uh, and for anybody in our audience that's watching, that's the responsibility uh, of the designers and the developers out there to really identify what your strong suits are and just work those. I, yeah, I think right? it is. It is something like a struggle that's kind of unique to designers in like the WordPress or other web communities, though, because there is a lot of pressure on us as designers to get pushed towards that developer end of the spectrum. Like, there's kind of an expectation People, that we want to grow yes. into a developer. Like, we're not there yet. Like, I carry I around this guilt Jack. daily. But no, people, I, people actually I, do that. They, they, I mean, designers also kind of bring that on themselves because they're like, sure, I can build a website, and they don't recognize a lot of the designers that I work with, probably none of you, but a lot of the designers that I work with don't actually recognize their own difference between being a designer and a developer, and they're like, sure, I can build a website, and they, they purport to be able to do that, and then the line becomes blurred between a web designer and a web developer. Well, I'm, and do I'm, any of you guys... Go ahead. I am I am not a designer. I don't claim to be a designer, and I tell my clients that uh, right up front. I, I think Why the, the classic. The, the, the classic. <laughs> just, just because uh, because you guys needed a tenth. Um, <laughs> no, we the just filled it, man. The classic, for the classic, the classic adage is a jack of all trades is a master of none. So if if you're if you're a designer, focus on design. Don't try to learn to be a coder. I mean, yes, Absolutely. you should. You should know, it's okay to get familiar. It's okay to know mm -hmm. some, but you, well, you shouldn't, shouldn't be doing both. Yeah, I agree. I, I think for People. me, like when I first started like doing like like design stuff, like when I was trying to like do websites, that was really helpful for me to actually try to build an HTML CSS website because then I knew kind of everything that went into it. Mm -hmm. So now I know how to hand all those files off, how to prep like the folders and layers and layers, and you know if I need to send over like a style sheet, like that was really helpful for me to actually get in there and actually learn how to do something to understand well, where the developers are coming from. Conversely, Robert, designers and Robert. developers should do the same thing and be familiar with what designers' lexicon is and, and what they need. What what would you say that is, Robert, if, if I asked designer, you if you were a developer, what would you say? Uh, I I would say semi front end developer because I can do the front end <laughs> stuff, but I know I I that's don't use the word semi on this show. <laughs> I look at it as if you're a print designer and you don't understand how like ink spread works, you don't understand what's you know how many lines per inch you need on something. If you don't understand how the print process works, no one's asking you to go and print your own stuff. But if yep. you don't understand the very basics of how your stuff is produced, yep. your files are going to get kicked out. You're totally. not going to be able to get it printed. So you don't need to know how to print your own stuff. But you need to be able to understand enough to get your stuff delivered totally. in totally. a yeah. way that no one else can do that work for you. Familiarity is, is I'm all for it. It's it's fine. Um, but don't but don't don't try to be both. Right. Oh, I totally agree. Although we, we do have to we do have to kind of decide where HTML and CSS falls in this spectrum. No, we really do not have area. to decide that at all. Let's not decide that because that's like a whole nightmare of pain. <laughs> I have a question though, and in our one last minute left, does anyone have any um, design specific uh, plugins that they like to use? I know, for example, I really like WP Tiles, right? Isn't that your thing that you like to talk about, Chris? No. No? <laughs> I don't, I've never even heard of it. So. Oh, I thought you were all about tiles. Oh, style They're tiles. Like, They're style not tiles. tiles. <laughs> I don't actually know what WP Tiles is. I saw it somewhere. Chris, <laughs> Chris, is, like, Chris well, is a big fan of the Google thing. Fonts plugin. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Jason, Honestly, my uh, favorite design yeah. tool is WordPress. Like, it's not a plugin, it's nothing else. WordPress is just a tool. Mm -hmm. For me to execute the design strategy. That was deep. Well put. 
I think that's a great way of uh, finishing up. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Let's, spend the next, let's spend the next eight minutes defining the word custom. <laughs> <laughs> we did well, that already. Oh, we're out of time. <laughs> yeah, oh, we are. Sorry. Sorry. I was so looking forward to it. <laughs> no problem. All right. Well, Michelle thank you all. Thank you all for being, thank yeah, you all for being on the show today. And uh, make sure you go to our website, dpwatercooler.com, and click on any of the links here if you're looking for a designer. Thank you all for being on the show. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Happy Memorial Day. Bye. 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 Can you say that?